Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Friday, March 20th, 2 p.m. Mountain Time, 2020. The models are in, and they're showing winter isn't over for the Northeast. In fact, snow will hit that region in just a few hours. We're talking Monday morning. The big story in our area, I-25, reopens between Castle Rock and Colorado Springs following closures due to crashes and blizzard conditions. Multiple cla crashes and blizzard conditions. In fact, Interstate 25 was closed in both directions yesterday and is open now. Keep calm. It's boom time. Lake Tahoe just saw 114 inches of global warming goodness in three days. Very few people are reporting on it. I hear crickets. After record rainfall on Thursday, blustery Friday kicks off cold stretch for southern Wisconsin. It's going to be cold. Remember this area of cold here. This is the temperature departures predicted, and it may stick that way. The five worst winners, U.S. cities for 2019-2020. Take a look. Some areas had the worst winter on record. Here in South Dakota, the Upper Peninsula, two areas in Wyoming. And all in the Upper Midwest as far as the worst winters on record. Snow may be headed for the Northeast just days after spring arrives. Even though spring has officially gotten underway, the odds are increasing for a springtime snowstorm across the interior Northeast during the first part of the coming week. We're going to check the models. Let's check the snowfall analyzer. Here's your analysis from the last 48 hours, and you can see that strip of heavy snow. That was from hashtag Winterstorm Pearl, dumping up to three feet in the southern mountains of my region. And Nebraska getting the biggest blast of snow with 8 to 10 inches through a, uh, some of these yellow strips. And southern Arizona also picking up on the global warming goodness. So heavy snow still falling at high elevations. Spring is likely to be warmer than normal across most of the U.S. And here you're looking at the spring flood outlook. Not looking good in the red zones. Purple, oh dear. And that's the upper Midwest, parts of Iowa. The U.S. is expected to stay warmer than average through the spring with widespread flooding because we had record snow. We'll get to that. 2020 started with the hottest January on record globally, followed by the second warmest February on record. The next three months are likely to continue this trend, and we know how good they are at picking trends, right? Well, they're suggesting that the entire east and west coast and south will all be warmer than normal. And there will be a large portion Great Lakes South, wetter than normal. And that's not good news for Great Lakes flooding because we're going to see record Great Lakes levels this year. Heavy rain and severe storms possible from the deep south to the northeast. A strong weather system may produce strong to severe storms across the lower Mississippi Valley and for portions of the Ohio Valley, mid-Atlantic, and the northeast. Damaging winds will be the primary threat from these severe storms. A tornado threat can't be ruled out across the northeast. Localized heavy rain could cause flash flooding from Texas to Mississippi. If you're in one of these green counties, click on your county at weather.gov to find out your warnings and watches. A little bit of winter storm warning and watch in the Upper Peninsula still. Heads up. Wacky spring weather. Let's check the GFS model quickly. Here is your Saturday through Sunday. Light snow in Colorado, Utah, and uh, the Sierras here as well as up in Montana there. And then we're going to have a little system moving through Minnesota, Michigan, and then that's the PA Northeast system. That would be your Monday. Monday will be your fun day in the Northeast through Tuesday up into Maine. It's insane. And then another system moving into the West, bringing heavy snow to all of the mountains. So it's like a broken record, but the Sierras need the, the, the moisture. And look at these high elevation totals up here. We're talking four feet or more up in the Cascades. As we move our way through spring, seismic update. No quakes a note. We have some amazing frack activity in Kansas. That Utah activity has quelled, and worldwide, nothing uh, of note. Pretty big rumbler up here at the edge of the Aleutians, Kodiak, Alaska 5.1, and then this Mongolian 5.5. All is well, except in I Iceland, an earthquake with magnitude 4.2 struck Reykjanes Volcano on the 18th of March as we've been monitoring seismic activity and inflation in this region. We'll get to that. 
Worldwide Volcano News Update. Sabankaya puffing to 30,000 feet in the last 24 hours. And if we come over to the Mount Thierenberg, Reykjanes Peninsula in Iceland, there's renewed inflation report coming out today. The Iceland Meteorological Office reports that the inflation and associated uplift that occurred around Mount Thierenberg January to February has started again. The deformation is occurring on the same location as before, but at a slower rate. The uplift started in January, but paused temporarily at the end of February. And the IMO now suggests that since the beginning of March, the uplift is about 20 millimeters. The deformation is believed to be caused by continued magma accumulation at depth. Now, the head of the National Hazard Monitoring Group at the IMO explains that these events do not guarantee that there will be an eruption, but they are the signs that an eruption may be imminent. So there's that. The Northern Hemisphere is having one of the snowiest winters since records began in 1979. In fact, the seventh snowiest winter ever in the Northern Hemisphere, excluding the mountains. Those are the facts. Did you know that two years ago was the fifth snowiest? And we were told that the snow was going to end. We also were told that Greenland is melting away. But just yesterday, three gigatons of ice forming on the southern tip. That's a lot of ice. And if we're up in the Arctic and talking about ice, let's talk about record Arctic ice extent. I mean from one side to the other, all a meter or thick. Both sides, both ways, one of the largest ice extents, meaning surface coverage, in over a decade. What scientists learn after firing a small cannonball into a near-Earth asteroid? Well, if you read this, they learn very little. They learn that they can make a dent in a far, uh, far away object. And then they show this model of how they think it formed. This perfect <laughs> triangular with a connecting rim was formed from a pile of rubble forming a ball, which formed a circle, then got hit, another pile of rubble, and then a diamond shape. See all that? that was, that's science. I'm baffled by that chart. Now, if you don't want to be baffled and you want to hear a great interview, I did an interview yesterday with uh, Jay Weedner from Reality Check. Uh, I believe it airs in s tonight, 7 p.m., our time. So check it out. About 30 or 40 minute interview. We had a great conversation about current affairs, the state of the state, climate, weather, and all kinds of stuff. And guys, if you're panicking and you don't know where to get seeds, calm down. I purchased this item three times on March 18th, and they still have them. So for just 17 bucks and four, five bucks shipping, you can get 16,500 non-GMO heirloom vegetable seeds in 40 packs. If that's not enough to get you growing, I don't know what is. Hope you got something out of the video. You can still buy seeds. And you don't need hand sanitizer. Just keep calm and wash your hands. We love each and every one of you. Get the seeds. Watch the interview tonight. Subscribe to the channel over at Reality Check. And thanks, Jay, for an awesome interview. Be safe, everyone.